Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's word to you today. Now we are in a new week and I know God's plan for you is good. Like I always tell you, how do I know? Because he sent his word. I'm not going to be preaching if God has not given me clearly what I should talk about. So if he's giving to me, he has you in mind. Praise God. So as you digest these words, something definitely is going to happen to you in your body. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, I have a lot I want to share with you. But can we just do what the Lord commanded us to do on this broadcast every day? Are you ready to call forth your daily bread? Join me in faith. Release your faith right now. I'm in agreement with you. I don't know what need you have today. I don't know what need, what bill must be paid this week. Listen, God is responding to you. As you act in faith and in agreement with me, a miracle is going to take place. So join me right now. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. Hey, we've from the beginning of the month, we've been talking about the revelation of eternal life. Now, from today, I'm going to be sharing with you on the manifestation of eternal life. Now, this is where the miracle begins. Praise God. This is where the essence of the revelation begins. Because if you've got revelation of something, and then that thing is, doesn't translate into a manifestation, then something is not right. If you have revelation for something, but it's not working, then something is not right. Praise God. So we've been talking about the revelation. I have shown you how Jesus came, why he came. We talked about all that. Why he came. Now, you know, I was, I was talking to the Lord and I, I got to that point where I said, Lord, it appears many don't believe. Now, when I say many, me inclusive, not because I don't want to believe, but then I'm realizing that something is wrong with what we have believed. And, and listen to me, Jesus made a very powerful statement. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, I believe anyone who's speaking the word of God is doing the same thing. The words he's speaking, they are spirit and they are life. It's not because someone says so, but if you align yourself to speak God's word, those words coming out of your mouth, they are spirit and they are life. I want you to listen to me. To a great extent, the outcome of your life has everything to do with the kind of words you receive. Now, I said you receive. I didn't say you hear. Because you may be in a sound church, listening to a sound preacher, hearing what he is saying, but you don't receive his words. To receive, you've got to be deliberate. You've got to clearly know that, look, I'm receiving what this man is saying. I believe what he is saying. I'll think on these things. See, I always tell you this. Even if you don't believe what I'm saying, take it and go and do your research. Don't just say, what, what is he talking about? What, what could he have been saying? You know, imagine this. Jesus came so that you will have eternal life. Where is the eternal life? I'm not saying so something you have. No. Listen, if I say I have come to make you rich, right? Now, after a while, you should see some semblance of riches in your life. I mean, your life should move from where it was before to a better place. You know what I'm talking about? If someone say, hey, I've come to do this for you. I've come to make you a superstar. 
Now, you should see some movements. You should see some activities taking place, gearing towards you becoming a superstar. You know, you begin to meet some important people because of your relationship with me. You understand what I'm talking about? You, you just know that, ah, I know this person. I know this, this person has my phone number. This person promised me. This person, maybe whatever you do, maybe music or acting, whatever it is. You, you can see that, look, I've been giving studio sessions. I've been, I've been invited to a, 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 a whatever, movies, uh, shoots, whatever it is. You should see. Now, Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it in abundance. Now, what is he referring to? Eternal life. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, we have downplayed this truth. We have not woken up to the reality of it. And I'm telling you the truth. Jesus, when he said eternal life, he meant eternal life. And I told you, eternal life is the life of God. Are you living the life of God? I'm not saying, are you confessing the life of God? I say, are you living the life of God? The life you're living, is it the life of God? Can you confidently say, I'm living the life of God. I'm not saying like, oh, say after me, I have the life of God. No, are you living? If you have it, then live it. You know, sometimes we read scriptures and we don't think, we don't meditate. We just take it like it's true, but how, how comfortable have we to, have we become to stay in this place where we know that something is true, but then we're not leaving it and it's okay. When are we going to leave it? Oh, there's a generation. When will that generation come? If it is true, why not in this generation? You see, I said earlier, you are the result of what you hear. You are the result of the message you receive. If you are receiving message of life, something should begin to happen in your body. Something should begin to happen in your system. You know, when we started this, this series, this month, it has, it, of course, it, it has made me to even meditate more in this light. And the more I meditate on it, the more I begin to ask myself, what is happening to the church? Where are the believers in Christ Jesus? You know, sometimes even the things going on in our spirits, it's difficult to even share because some of it, we can't articulate it clearly, but we see the truth as light. You know, that's how God speaks. God speaks by light. So the light is made manifest in your heart. And then you now begin to draw words from that light according to the knowledge that you have. You see, if your knowledge is low, the intensity of strength uh, that you can pull out from that light will be low. If your knowledge is high, then you pull out great strength. See, now, so here is it. How come we think that uh, eternal life is, is one, you know, is, is even when you die, hey, there are things Jesus clearly said. I want to read, read the scripture to you today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Second Timothy. Chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. It says verse, from verse 8. I'm reading from verse 8 to 10. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Therefore, 
do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the suffering for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Watch this now. Not according to our works. We have not been called according to our works. No. So he didn't look at you and say, Brother A, you can pray very, very well. Let me call you into the ministry of prayer. Brother B, mm, you can walk around very well. Let me call you into the ministry of an evangelist. Uh -uh. It says, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling? Not according to our works. Watch this. But according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Uh -huh. Hold on. This calling is according to grace and according to his own purpose which he had see he had this he had this purpose for us and he gave this life he gave this thing to us when did he give it to us before time was you know what that means you know i read to you the book of life it was written before the world began right now he said there was a purpose before thank you lord jesus but according to his own purpose and grace which he which was given to us in christ jesus before time began now look at verse 10 but has now been revealed by the appearing of our savior jesus christ who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Oh, huh? did you read that? Did you read that? We were called before time began. We were called according to God's purpose and grace. Called to do what? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How can you read things like this and still be normal? We were called according to his purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before. You know, Jesus, I've told you this before. Jesus existed before time began. He did exist. See, he was the word of God. Every manifestation you have seen in scripture was his manifestation. For example, Melchizedek. That was the manifestation of the word of God. That was the word made flesh. But you see, for the first time, he now dwelt with us. Now, why did he dwell? Now, before this time, every manifestation they've heard of him, he just shows up. And he gives them a word, gives them something, and he's gone. But now, because God wanted his image to be expressed, God wanted his personality to be known. He wanted himself to, he wanted us to see him for who he is. So the word came to dwell with us. So Jesus was born, and then he dwelt on this earth for 33 years. 33 years. <laughs> Think about it. Why? To show us the nature and character of God. Because before now, there's been lots of misconception about who, the, who God is. Everybody just take one thing, one revelation they have of him, and they think that is it. Oh, he's a consuming fire because they see him consume in one place. Oh, this is God. He's a consuming fire. So you see, every attribute you see is according to their revelation. But now, God wanted us to know him for who he is. 
And so because of that, he caused the word to come dwell among us. And that's the person of Jesus. But even before that decision, Jesus has existed before time was. And then he, God's plan for us have also existed. And the, the, the purpose of God's plan is that we, hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus. He says that according to his purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now he's talking about the man, Jesus. He says now it has been revealed. So this thing existed before time was. Now it has been revealed by the appearing of the man Jesus. Right? Okay. Then he says, Jesus who abolished death. Say who has, not who shall. Did you notice he said he abolished, not shall abolish? Who abolished death? Think about it. If he has abolished death, so what's going on now? Why are people still dying? Jesus, do you know what abolish means? Now, hmm. Hmm. If there was a law, you know, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, right? Okay. So the wages of sin is death. So when you sin, what you get back is death. Now, imagine death being abolished. To, to abolish means to abrogate, to, to take out. So he abolished death. Jesus abolished death. Not only did he abolish death, look at what he did next. He abolished death and brought life and immortality to light. How? True the good news to the gospel aha uh -huh. now link this up with what i've been telling you all last week and upper week jesus said this is life eternal john chapter 17 verse 3 this is life eternal that they might know you the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent and i told you that that and actually is he meant true Jesus Christ whom you have sent. This is eternal life. The knowledge of God the Father through Jesus Christ. Now here he's telling you that Jesus abolished death. He did it with his own life. Hebrews tells us that he may taste death for every man. So Jesus tasted death for every man. And he didn't come to tell us that, hey guys, I've tasted death, it's very sweet. You guys can go and die now. No. Like someone tasting food and, mmm, yummy. Ah, then everybody wants to go and eat it. No, this one, like, look, I've tasted it, done. It has been tasted. So you guys, no need anymore. He said he tasted death for every man. After he tasted death for every man, he abolished it. So, what is happening? Are these things true? Have you ever considered this? Is this true? Or are these people just writing anything that comes to their mind? Did Paul just write this thing to Timothy and say, hey, guy? He said, even the Paul that wrote it, he died. Yeah, the fact that he died doesn't mean what he wrote was a lie. Jesus that said it, is he alive or is he dead? If Jesus who said it is alive, we know he's alive. 
Because the Bible said the disciples saw him go. See that? They saw him go. So we know he's alive. If, if he's alive and he said it, that because I leave, you will leave also. When will that expire? When will that statement expire? Have you ever thought about it? Brothers and sisters, we have a big challenge. We have not believed. We have not believed. But I'm trusting the Spirit of God as we go on this week. Your heart will be stirred to believe. And not only believe, you will see the manifestation of His life in you. The time is up. But listen, take hold of your heart and say, you know what, heart? You're going to believe God. If no one has ever believed God, I'm ready to believe God. Have a wonderful day today. God bless you. Bye.